And first, an important disclaimer, this video is intended for entertainment purposes only, and viewer takes full responsibility for any mayhem that may occur as a result of playing with power tools, throwing sharp objects, and or watching internet videos. The activities portrayed here are done by untrained professionals. Do not try any of these activities at home, at work, or anywhere. No warranties, express or implied, are provided. This video void unless prohibited by law. And for God's sake, why are you taking construction advice from a mathematician? So what you'll need to construct the thrown weapon stand are three 2x4s of about 8 foot length. You'll need a 2x6, but you won't need the full 8 feet in length. You only use about 3 to 4 feet of it. A 3 inch hinge. A couple of 4 inch bolts, washers, and wing nuts. Oh, and don't forget the medical supplies. In addition, you'll probably want to get some exterior screws that will bind everything together. Well, since we're using 2x4s, they're 2 inches thick, 4 inches should be about the right length, right? Okay, so the first thing you'll want to do is cut 6 inch blocks off those 2x4s. And now, through the magic of CGI animation, we'll show the first step. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the remaining length of the 2x4, take those 6 inch blocks that you cut off earlier, and attach the one to the other using those 4 inch screws. And at this point the fact that I'm a mathematician becomes obvious. Now the boards are called 2x4s because they're 2 inches thick by 4 inches wide. Except they aren't. They're more like one and three quarter inches thick. And what that means is that four inch screw is going to stick out the other side. So it's back to the hardware store. So you could probably get away with a three and a half inch screw, but a two and a half inch is going to be more than enough for the purposes that we need. Okay, so let's try that again. Again, through the magic of CGI animation, we'll show what happens. You're going to take the remaining length of that 2x4, you're going to take the 6-inch block, and you're going to screw the two pieces together. And this forms one of the legs. And you'll do that to the other 2x4, and this gives two of the legs of the thrown weapon stand. And I'm still waiting for Pixar to make their offer. At this point, life happens. We go on vacation. I win first prize for a Byzantine necklace. And it's a couple weeks before I get back to the target stand. And now what we want to do is we want to attach the two legs together using that hinge. Now, we will need to use power tools for this, so here's one of the common dangers of power tools. So be careful not to trip on the cord. Now, if you bought the hinges, they probably came with a bunch of screws. So these are actually too short, so throw them out. What you'll actually want are some of those longer screws, the three and a half inch or even the four inch screws that we couldn't use. Those are good. And a lot of people like using these star drive screws because they are less likely to strip as you're trying to put them in. And they are less likely to strip. But as you can see, it will still happen. And in fact, I had to take one out with a pair of pliers because it did strip during the installation process. Pause for a visit by the neighbor's cat. And your final assembly of the legs will look something like this. So the next step is going to be attaching the support arms. So lay the stand down flat. So here we have the stand down flat and we have a target round for comparison. Now remember the 2x6 that we had, we're going to cut a couple of short lengths off of that, about 9 inches or so. So we'll cut off two 9 inch segments and all the rest of this 2 by 6 is not needed for this particular project. You can save it for building more thrown weapon stands if you have more targets or use it in some other project. So now we'll attach the arms to the inside of the stand and how far down is going to depend on how big your target is. And for this particular one I angled the arms slightly upward. I'm not sure if I do that again. And now secure the arms with those two and a half or three and a half inch screws. And do the same thing on the other side. And as a reminder, if you do angle these upward, make sure that they're both angled in the correct direction. So remember the top of the stand is where the hinge is, so we need to angle this up. So you should remember that we got 
3 2 by 4 by 8. And two of those became two of the legs. We'll take that third one and cut it in half to give us two four-foot segments. And we're going to bolt it onto the two legs to form two more legs. So first, you're going to take that four-foot segment and drill a quarter-inch hole straight through. This is going to be large enough to fit those bolts that you got earlier. Now you'll want to take that leg assembly and turn it over so the arm is on the ground. Then your four-foot segment will get attached slightly above the arm. Now drill the rest of the way through and you can attach the leg with the bolt. So you'll end up with something like this where you'll want to round off that corner that's sticking out. Now at this point, you can set it up. The target round is going to rest on the arms. And we'll take a little walk around to see what the entire thing looks like. And of course you'll want to try it out, so set it up, make sure your range is clear, and let fly. And in slow motion, 